Thank you all for being here today. I'm going to be talking about uh, Fusion.js. It's a, a web framework that we use at Uber. And it's going to be basically the platform that all web projects at Uber use going forward. And uh, it's something that we release internally at the beginning of the year. And we've been piloting with some projects uh, with some success. And we've just updated the homepage for um, project for the open source version of this. So the reason we built this framework was uh, we had an internal framework that we're using. It was collecting technical debt for a few years and it was getting difficult to maintain. And as you know, uh, web technologies, they move pretty fast. Um, there's always new things coming up, uh, new types of performance optimizations, new techniques. Um, you know, things that we want to adopt, um, developer experience things. Um, and we want to always be on the edge and make productivity better for our engineers. We want to make the quality of the code better for the end users and so on. Because of the technical debt that we've been accumulating over the years, it can be difficult to um, move forward with uh, new technologies and, and, on all, and all that stuff. Um, for example, testing can get difficult if you have a monolithic, monolithic uh, architecture. Deploying these, uh, these new te techniques can be difficult. And just general maintenance of the, of the framework can be difficult. So what we did was uh, we built an architecture based on universal plugins, um, dependency injection, network isolation, and static typing. And these are basically cornerstones that make easier to test both the framework and applications built on top of that framework. Uh, what, I'm, what I mean by an universal plugin is uh, you can think of it a, a plugin similar to a, a Babel plugin or a Webpack plugin. It's basically adding functionality on top of a core that, that does a basic functionality for a, for a web app. A plugin is universal when it can run both server code and, and client code. So in this example here, the idea is that we wanted to be able to register some part of an application, for example, a router, or for example, atomic CSS styling, or security headers, or whatever. And we want it to be easy to install these things into your application, even if they have difficult to do integrations. So for example, a router, you might need to think about um, server rendering, you might need to think about React providers, and you need to make sure that the, it works with a bundle splitting technique, and then you need to make sure that it works with the hot module reloading. Uh, you have to hydrate data on, from, from the client to the HTML template, and there's a lot of things that you have to think about. And if you're using different solutions, then you might have to be modifying code in five, six different places just to get this working. And this is only routing. It, it will be a similar situation for, um, for an atomic CSS uh, framework. Um, it might be a similar situation for security headers and so on. Um, so by having a universal plugin that can encapsulate all of this stuff into a single plugin, we're able to just do app.register, a thing, and that will install every possible integration point that you need. And uh, if you don't need that, then you can just not install it. So for example, um, a lot of our internal applications, they don't need uh, internationalization. Um, so you could just not install that. But if you're working on a public site that does need to be global, then you can install a, a, a plugin that will set up uh, the ITN stuff and uh, it will set up all of the server stuff, all of the client stuff, all of the providers and everything that you needed to do. And it's just a single line of code for that. So another aspect that uh, makes this framework easy to work with is that it provides a dependency injection system built into the plugin system. And basically that allows you to uh, compartmentalize your code more effectively. So you can separate all of your logic concerns into services and uh, you can inject one service into another service so for example, if you have a logger that needs to be logging everywhere, instead of putting console logs everywhere, you can inject your logger. You can mock out your logger if you need to in, in your tests. You can um, decouple different parts of services if they talk to different backends. And uh, you can unit test all of this stuff. And another thing is that all of these are, are statically typed with uh, Flow.js. 
And uh, that means that if you're injecting the wrong thing or trying to use a method that doesn't exist, then you can get uh, a warning right in your, in your editor saying, oh, you're using the wrong thing. And that accelerates the, the development uh, process. So another aspect that is incorporated into the plugin is uh, middleware. Uh, a lot of you probably already use Express.js. So we use um, Koa, which is kind of like the virtual successor of that. Uh, it was created by DJ. I'm sure you've probably heard of that guy. And the idea is that uh, all of the state can be put into a object and you can mock that object and easily see what is the, the state before and after it goes through a, a middleware stack and you don't need to be fiddling with um, mocking the network and it makes it a lot easier to to work with uh, mocking uh, functionality related to uh, lifecycle of a request and you can separate them and it's easy to test all of the pieces so the other part of um, the framework that we put a lot of effort into is uh, testing we're using Jest, and it has a lot of facilities that uh, if you use Jest, you're probably familiar with. Um, there's lots of mocking facilities. There's snapshot testing that you can use. And there's it's only ecosystem with the Enzyme, for example. You can use that for, for React uh, tests. Um, and uh, all of the other things that we put into the framework uh, make it easier to test things in isolation. So the dependency injection comes into play, and uh, the core contacts API comes into play and we can create a simulator that will allow you to test different uh, parts of the, the, the middleware stack without necessarily spin up in a, a spinning up a whole server without having to go through a network layer. Then your test can, run, can basically run faster and, and more reliably because of that. We also integrate it with Puppeteer. So if you can, if you want to do real tests with a, with a real browser engine, then that provides the ability to. So FusionJS, currently we're using it about 60 projects uh, at Uber. It's the default framework that we're, that we're using for the scaffold. So every new project is going to be using FusionJS as a base. And also for all of the other uh, projects that were already existing before, we were working on migration scripts to have them automatically migrated from the previous framework over to FusionJS. And there are about 600 of those that we're gradually uh, migrating over now. And we're also planning on work on different uh, improvements to the, the, core fr the core framework. So things like, like uh, browser-specific bundles that only, uh, that only serve like ES6 or whatever it is that the browser supports for modern browsers. Um, we're, we have some work being done on service workers and on client hints and other performance related things. And a lot of this is pretty exciting to me anyways. As I mentioned, we're, we're just uh, updated the homepage for this project. It's an open source project. It's MIT license. If you want to check it out, it's at fusionjs.com. And uh, if you want to play around with it, uh, we will love some feedback. Thanks.